This episode of Film Right is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Right, we're getting all trekky with some Star Trek effects, and I got a Star Trek shirt on. Trek. Yes, it will. It's not the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. Fine, just give me the numbers. 32.750-323, negative 96.771-241. I'm being honest, this is stupid. Shut up, Eris. Yeah, shut up, Eris. Idiot. Hope you accidentally transport your penises off. I think I have it. We're gonna be rich. With all that money. Shut up, Eris! Idiot! I don't understand. I gave you the location of the bank's vault. It's because you're using Apple Maps. No, it isn't. Yes. No. It is. Just use Google Maps. Everything Apple makes is better. That's not even remotely true. There's so many things. That... Steve Jobs was a god. There's a payphone in the middle of the room. Try this. Three two point seven five zero three two three. Negative 96.771151. I'm sure this is it. Fine. Wow, awesome. Money. Harris! F you! Can we use Google Maps now? No. Apple Maps sucks. No, it's Eris. He's bad juju. No, it's Apple Maps. I never use it for this reason. I never use it either. Eris! You never use it. Never. For this reason. Right. So you usually use Google Maps to steal money from bank vaults halfway around the world using transporter technology supplied by J.J. Abrams. Well, not usually. No. 66.750.323. Negative 96.90210. You just don't want to download the Google Maps app. I don't have any room left on my iPad. I have to delete some stuff. It's so much work. That's just lazy. I will cook you in your own vomit! Can we keep the dog? I hate you. I'm sure of it this time. It. Huh? Hit the button. Oh. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and with the release of the amazingly awesome Star Trek Into Darkness and with Hit Film Ultimate on my computer and ready to go, I decided to try my hand at a transporter effect because this. So the first thing that has to happen here is footage shooting with a camera. Yes, it will. Then I bring my footage straight up into Hit Film 2. Now, the last time we took a look at this bad boy, we really just looked at the basics, the bare bones. And while this software doesn't have everything, it has some very impressive VFX capabilities. Like for instance, the atomic particles. What's awesome about this is that the plugin is basically taking any layer that you put it on and it turns it into a ton of dots that make up your image. So now you can manipulate those particles to do all sorts of awesome things, especially if you were working with a keyed out element. Another cool thing is that you can have it react to music. If you add some music and turn on audio interaction, the particles will react to the sound that you dropped in, which 
is great for motion graphics. I use atomic particles to bring in my dog layer, so she just doesn't pop on. Instead, I animated her in using the atomic particle. But now let's kick off the transporting goodness, shall we? We already have the dog coming in, which again was done simply by dropping in a clean plate, then my dog duplicating that layer, then masking her out of the top layer, then adding atomic particles to that and keyframing particle appearance and disperse and fractal to bring the particles together. I won't go into all that here since HitFilm already has a great tutorial on using that plugin, which you can find here. Really horse. <laughs> okay. Mm. A minute. Now we have my dog coming in all like thatness, which means we are halfway done. Yes, that's right. So now, make a composite shot and add particle simulator. Inside of that, I will set shape to sphere, unlock the scale, and change them to somewhere around 300 and 500 and in the 200 areas. Next, check boundary and twirl shape close. Now we'll move past these two and right to particle system, which is where we do our heavy lifting. Inside of general, set your particles per second to 250, then go to the end of your effect where you want it to stop and set a keyframe. Move forward a bit and then set the particles to zero. Now move on to appearance and set texture source to built in and texture to spark star. It could be something else if you want. I toyed around with a few things, but this seemed to work the best. Then you're gonna check align to motion and we are ready to move on. Next, twirl open movement, set life to three, scale to 12, speed to zero and mass to 15. Most of that is what will give you your main look. So toy around in there until you get the style that you're really shooting for. Steve Jobs. What's it called? <laughs> Next, we're gonna duplicate that emitter and change the shape and position to be the base of our effect. This will break it up so it doesn't all seem so uniform. Then you're gonna add force, turn type to turbulence and strength to 20. And this is what will give you your movement. And now we have this, no movement really. So click the layer, go up to transform and keyframe the Y rotation to spin like crazy. And then turn on motion blur and we now have this. Much closer, but we aren't getting that awesome streaky liney thingy happening. So open properties for your comp, go to advance and change shutter angle to 720, max samples to 60 and shutter phase to minus 180. And now we have our streaks. So finally, we're gonna right click the comp, click new layer grade and add two instances of glow. Set them to add and boom. So now when we jump back over, we have a solid looking transporter effect. Now you could spend a ton of time on this, go crazy, level it up like a mother freaker, but that is a quick and easy way to get that effect looking sweet, sexy, and transportery. Am I right? Yep! <laughs> Woo! It's <laughs> good. Domain names. That's a thing. That, that is a thing. You might need one. If you if you got a business, if you want to be a filmmaker, you need a website, and to have a website, you need a domain name so people know how to get to your website. Am I right? You are right. Why not get a .NET for your website? I mean, it's universally known. It injects your website with all sorts of credibility. I mean, you'll, you'll instantly start seeing the advantages of building a web presence around a .NET. Or if you wanted a .com, but you're like, oh no, they took my .com name. Fear not, my friend. Get yourself a .NET. Still get to have your name, or if you already have the .com, get the .net too to protect your brand so dumb it if somebody doesn't buy the other one and then try to be you. You know what that is? Identity thief! That's right, and stop it before it starts. See what I'm saying? I think you see what I'm saying. Get your domain .netness at domain.com because they're affordable. I mean, the .net is only $8.99 a year. It's reliable, it's easy to use, and they want to hook you up with 15% off when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout. So go to domain.com, get your .net, use FILMRIOT coupon code to save you some 15%. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. And I am back. One last thing I wanted to point out to you guys about HitFilm is the fact that you can import 3D objects, much like Element 3D. HitFilm can bring in LWOs, uh, 3DS, and OBJ files directly into the software. Now I found the payphone model at TurboSquid, which I have shown you guys before. There are all sorts of great models that you can get there. You can find plenty of really good free stuff or spend a ridiculous amount of money. Whatever your heart desires. Anywhere between zero and, and a, and a ton.
<laughs> Once you bring your model in, if you have all the materials in the same folder and everything has been set up right, the model should come in correctly with all its textures attached how they should be, which is fantastic. And I think my favorite part about this whole 3D import thing is the 3D import window. In here, you can go through all the different properties of the model and set it up perfectly for your scene. And what I love most about that is I notice that when you click on a layer, the corresponding piece of the model that it represents turns red. Seems small, but it saved me a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> I can't, I can't. But now that I have it all set up how I want, I'll click okay and I'm ready to get to work. Of course, I can always come back to this window to correct things just by clicking the cog here. So there you have some great examples to show how this is a lot more than just software for starters. I mean, as I said before, it is perfect for beginners for sure, but it has a lot of functions that make it another great addition to my Filmmaker Toolkit. And again, this doesn't do away with After Effects for me, not even close. For me, this is a totally different piece of software that I will use in addition to After Effects, which brings me back to their Kickstarter. HitFilm has a Kickstarter up right now to get their Mac version released this year. And as a Mac user, I really want this to happen, which is why I've already backed it. Plus, if you back it now, you can get the software at a crazy reduced rate. So if you're looking to save some money and you do want the software, now's the time to do it since it's like, I think, almost half price if you back it. <laughs> he laughed, not me. Sorry. Yes. All right. That's it for today. If you want more tutorials on HitFilm, check out their YouTube page. They have tons of great stuff there, including a really great tutorial on how to use 3D models in the program. Look at that. That looks real. So definitely check that out, and if you have some questions or you just want to say hi, you can come and follow me on my Twitterverse right here at twitter.com forward slash Ryan underscore Conley. I'll see you guys next week when I call to ask me about a guy that I fought that I'm going to have to fight, but me knows about it because I already fought it, and but I haven't. But I, but I will. But I, and it's, but it helped. I was very helpful. What?